Senzo Miyiwa murder trial has adjourned for recess. The five accused will take their familiar uh, sports on the benches of the Pretoria High Court as the matter kicks off on the 15th of April 2024. Before the adjournment, accused one's alibi again came under scrutiny after a road traffic management cooperation investigator cast aspersions on Muzi Sibiya's uh, whereabouts on in 2014. Sibiya claims he was not in Guatang that year, but E. Nazi's uh, records show he was. His defense also insisted that accused member uh, number one, Muzi Sibiya, uh, was not in Guatang when the Bafana Bafana captain was murdered. Sibiya and four other accused are on trial at the High Court in Pretoria for the murder of Muyiwa. Muyiwa was shot and killed in 2014 while at Kali uh, Kumalu's parental home uh, in the East Rand of Gatang. And now to discuss this further, I'm joined by a law expert at Law Clinic uh, University at Johannesburg, Romeo Hart Elton. Romeo, thanks for coming on. Uh, let's get started, shall we? Uh, this trial has uh, joined once again with a lot of controversy and no clear direction of where it's going. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this? No, indeed, we just came out of a lengthy trial within a trial where the confessions uh, was ruled to be admissible that was allegedly made by accused one and two. And now we're going into the trial and the state is now called um, a road uh, traffic management corporation investigator to come and give evidence in court. But for me, I believe that the defense counsels were supposed to be more diligent in their cross-examination of this witness because how our system works is that I would give an address to the road traffic management corporation where mm -hmm. I want my vehicles administrative documents to be delivered. But in the interim, I could move to three different places and not change it. And there's nothing in the law that says I must change it immediately. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to use that information, the innatus information, to try and pinpoint to say, at the time when the crime was committed, uh, Muzisi Bia was in Johannesburg, Gauteng. And for me, I think they should work more with that evidence to say that, yes, on the day that I register my vehicle, I gave this address. But you cannot say on the day of the murder that I was in Gauteng. And that's how they need to deal with this witness. But the state is trying to use that angle to say we want to place them in Gauteng on the date that the murder was committed because they say they were not in Gauteng. Hmm. Let's talk about accused one's uh, accusations that he was in Johannesburg following the Nazis uh, record. How reliable are these records in a world where, you know, records can be manipulated? No, it, it can be reliable if he agrees that he was here. Obviously, there's other ways that you can also sort of have substantiate what's on the record by looking at when did he visit the RTMC centers, like the Road Traffic Management Corporation centers, to actually make um, his driver's license or his learner's license tests, which we know now is in July and somewhere in September. On that day, of course, there's proof that he wrote them. So based on that, that can be seen as proper records that he was at that point in Gauteng. But after that, you cannot really prove. And obviously, with a lot of data manipulation that can happen, they need to give you a person that works in the center that says this is the business record, this is how it looks, and explains it and say that no alteration and explain the operation of the system and say there can be no human interference in the system. If they don't, they can also take that on um, a, a challenge to actually say that the records was manipulated. So with all these things, they need to canvas it with the court and with these witnesses that comes to testify on the accuracy of these records. Hmm. Now, uh, Kelly uh, Kumalu has been implicated. Any reason why he's not in the dock as well? And also, let's also touch on the, the state strategy. We have not seen more people who were in the house that day, especially uh, Longway, hopefully I'm correct. I'm saying that correctly. And Kelly's mother. Is that something that the state might be avoiding to call these two? Uh, I think the state, um, Longway Tuara and Kelly Kumalu specifically, I think the state wants, because now I believe in 2020, they already had these confessions, knowing what's in the confessions to say that Kelly Kumalo allegedly paid these five accused to actually um, eliminate or assassinate or kill, contract killing of Senzo Mayua. So they had that knowledge. Now, I think the state was worried that the court might rule that these confessions was inadmissible, and hence they first had to get 
these confessions to be admissible now they can rely on the evidence there and try and actually get a conviction convict these five guys on the confessions with other circumstantial evidence like the ones for the traffic road management um, um, corporation that they want to bring there to convict them and once they get a successful um, prosecution here with these five guys then they can now charge Kelly Kumalo using the evidence that was already tried and tested in this case against her to also um, sort of have charge and prosecute her successfully. But if the prosecution in this case fails, it means that Kelly Kumalo will never stand trial. So that is the predicament, and I think that is a state strategy to say we first want to deal with these first, first five. That was the executionist, if one can use that word loosely. And once we get the executionist found guilty, successfully prosecuted, now we can go after the mastermind who we believe is Kelly Kumalo and maybe Longwe Twala, because I think by now they would have called Longwe Twala, but I think there's also an issue as to where the gun came from, who was involved. So there's also issues with the gun, and hence they don't want to call Longwe Twala. Uh, Romeo, thank you so much for, for coming on. We appreciate you for answering our questions today. Thank you.